Hi everybody, this is Wednesday morning's devotion. I hope you're in for a, a great day. Uh, we've been contemplating the armor of God that uh, in Ephesians chapter 6, Paul suggests that we put on if we would stand against the wiles of our enemy, Satan. He talks about the belt of truth, getting our lives in order so we can do stuff. He's talking about the breastplate of righteousness, protect the feelings of our hearts and the emotions and the motives and the values that we have. He's spoken about the, uh, the shoes shod with the gospel of peace, that we can take gospel with us wherever we go. He's spoken about the shield of faith, which is uh, amazing. The helmet of salvation, protect the way you think. But now he gets to his final weapon aspect of the armor and it's an offensive one everything else so far has been defensive and it's been pretty much from the front on now he takes the only offensive weapon that we have and he talks about the sword of the spirit which is the word of god that is two formats the word of god comes in two formats first of all the first format is the written format we have the bible and the reason we get ourselves into so much trouble is we don't read the Bible. We don't memorize the Bible. And many of us sometimes will challenge even our belief of the Bible. Well, I have to tell you people, with all of the skeptics and the cynics out there, the Bible is the Word of God. Without it, you're not going to be able to survive in the battle against Satan. We have so many biblical precedents that have been set for us in this regard. Have a look at Jesus after his baptism, went up onto the Mount uh, of Temptation. Three times Satan came at him and said, Jesus, man, you look hungry, 40 days. You haven't eaten anything. Why don't you just turn these rocks into bread, Jesus? If you're the Son of God, then do that. And Jesus said to him, Satan, it is what? It is written. It is written. Don't put the Lord to the foolish teeth. And man shall not live by bread alone. So three times, the three different temptations, funnily enough, the same temptations that Satan used against Jesus are the ones that he uses against us even today. He is so predictable. You know how he's going to come against you. So don't try and argue with him. Don't try and debate with him. Don't try and beat him with academic arguments. Don't try that. Just declare the word of God to him. Three times. Go and read it. Jesus said, it is written. It's a powerful powerful statement the only problem is you've got to know what's written if satan's going to come against you you need to have studied this stuff you need to have known something that you can declare that it is written about so find yourself a bible study find yourself some means of studying the scripture memorize those passages so that when satan comes against you you're able to quote it is written these are the people who stand the test of spiritual time it's disciplined as any military person would have to be with the armor, with the offensive weapon of the Word of God. But that's the first Word of God. It's called the Logos Word, which is the written Word of God. But there's another Word of God that I think is vitally important. It's called the Rhema Word. I'm sure many of you know this. The Rhema Word of God is the Word of God that God gives to me personally. I can't give you my rhema word. I can tell you what it is. I can affirm it by somebody else's. But it's that word of assurance that God gives to me as an individual. It's that rhema word of God that when I meet with him and when I spend time with him in the devotions and in during the course of the day where he speaks to me kind of personally and you say, wow, do I hear voices in my head? No, I don't. No, I don't. But there is something that we learn to discern in our Christian lives as we get to know God better and as we get to discern when God is speaking to us through circumstances, through people, and just through that little, still, small voice in your mind that God uses to speak with you. And it's these rhema words of God that give you that just that, that adrenaline and that that power to know that no matter what the world throws at me, no matter what I have to stand against, no matter what Satan does to me, I know again that I know that I know that I know that God cares for me, loves me. I've got the helmet of salvation. I'm assured that I'm a believer. I have this word of God in my hand, which is the word, the written word of God. And then I meet with God. And it's difficult to describe and it's very difficult to understand as well. But when you meet with him, you just know that he's with me. 
that he is whispering words of encouragement into my ears and as I live this Christian experience. Joshua had one such word where Joshua had to face the great challenge of crossing the Jordan River. And he looked at this ominous task and he thought, how on earth am I going to do this? Moses is dead and now I'm the leader of these millions of rebellious people. How am I going to do this thing? And God comes with a rhema word to him and says, hey, Joshua, wherever your foot is going to stand on the other side of that river, I'm going to give it to you. Do not be afraid. Do not be destroyed. Be encouraged. Be strong. Believe. Hold on to the Word of God. Hold to the Word of God. Joshua, you're going to be fine. Get out there and cross that river. And as Joshua felt that assurance, he didn't need Moses anymore. He had the assurance of the rhema Word of God that what God said he would do, for goodness sake, he's God, man. He's going to do it. And so that was the rhema Word that fired him up. So today, Spend some time in the Word. Start reading the Bible, people. Memorize some scriptures. Go to a Bible study, for goodness sake. A cell group or find a group of people who study it together. Find strength from them. Find yourself a good church and begin to believe that the word, written Word of God is what it is. It's your offensive weapon against Satan. Secondly, remember for the, look for the rhema word. You're not going to get that occasionally doing life normally. You've got to spend time with God. Get to know Him get to know who he is, get to know his character, and wait for God to speak. Mm, isn't it an awesome life? Don't you love this? It's awesome. But go and have a fantastic day, you people. God bless you.